Draw Simple Easy. Well, hello there, guys and girls. Today we're going to be drawing a quick, simple, easy picture of Rias Gremory from High School D times D. So with your sheet of paper, go ahead and start to draw a nice large circle right towards the top middle part of the page. And as usual, this circle is the building block, which becomes the top of the character's head for us. And if I get this circle to come all the way round and down, we're then going to have the character's face ever so slightly tilted and ever so slightly off to the left. So I'm going to map this circle just by bringing a line that shows actually it's a sphere. And from the centre line of this sphere, we're going to go around the other way as well, so we've got it crossed out. And I'm actually just going to bring a line that goes down the front and then drops straight off the front as well. And that maps out the overall length of the front of the face. You'll notice I've gone about half the distance of this circle further down to get the point of the chin. And on the left hand side, we're just going to sweep a line down that gets to about this circle height and then just cuts in on this side. And then a similar thing on this side, sweeps back up and out, up towards the side of that spherical shape like so. And that's how we've got the character's face in. Now normally I like to build it block by block for these different characters, but we're going to use a bit more of a traditional building blocks method. So I'm going to get a center line that runs straight down the bottom of the face that sort of follows the flow of the neck and the body. And then below this chin line, I'm going to drop down and have some shoulders that come straight off. So I'm going to get a shoulder line just like this at an angle, it crosses out. And what I'm going to do now is imagine a body which is two head widths wide. So let's make sure it's all nice and in focus. And if I imagine about from here to here, it's pretty much double the width of this head. There's one, one would fit in on this side, another would fit in on that side. I'm just gonna create this body shape just like this, which is gonna become the outside edges of the chest. And that's just gonna drop down fairly thin off the bottom of the page like so. Now the neck for this character is gonna drop just below the chin line as well. And that's a short line down here to the middle, a longer line that catches up the side of the jaw here on this side, and then probably just smooths in just a little bit. And I've got some shoulder circles right on this corner, right on the inside edge. Let's get a building block circle here, and we'll get another building block circle there. We won't see these final shapes, but it helps us understand where the character is. So with this pose, we're going for the old hands on hips, which means I'm gonna have a hand right down here, probably just gonna disappear off the bottom of the page. So I've just got a little edge of block in there, but more importantly, I've got to join it from the shoulder to this wrist. And I'm gonna do that by just having the arm go off to the left and then go down in. So here's my guideline to show the flow of the arm, where I've got this elbow point in, and you'll notice again this distance, it sticks out another head width about but this distance here, I'm gonna put in a nice big circle again, just to show where the elbow might be. And then I'm just gonna join that up very quickly, just like this, circle to circle, and again, down towards the hand, just moving in and getting a bit thinner towards the wrist. That's some basic building blocks that we like to do. So with this, I'm gonna get a point on the further stage. Whenever you've got an arm at an angle, if you imagine that arm becomes an arrow, this point here, the elbow is in the direction of the arrow, so it's pointing this way, the elbow is going to go off on this side there. Now, with this character as well, we've got a big chest, so I'm going to get a line that goes from the bottom of these shoulder circles, right across the chest here like so, and then in this zone, we're going to pop in the boobs. So one big circle around about here, like so, coming up to the middle line. And instead of being a perfect circle all the way around, it's gonna teardrop a little bit. So it's actually just gonna smooth out towards the top. And then same on this side as well, we'll just have another one going off to the right, round about here, and then smoothing back in. That curve, you'll notice this curve here, slightly different shape, almost a bit straighter. And then the arm on this side just drops straight down past the body. So it's just gonna go down there. So there's our basic shapes. We now need to just put the character on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off around about the eyes and face. With this character, the eyes or the center line of the eyes is halfway between our center circle and the bottom of the circle, or essentially 
half the height of the face in, to in total. This point to this point is the same distance as this point to this point. So I'll get a faint guideline in there and then I'm just going to imagine a pair of eyes which are going to be a pupil which is a big ellipse right in the middle there and maybe right in the middle here just like that but we're not going to stick too much of them we're going to put some eyes over and surrounding so i'm starting down on this side to get a hood of an eye which goes all the way up to the outside edge like this and then hooks down and in like so same on this side just hooks up and then hooks down and then cuts off this pupil at the bottom as well nice and flat here same on that side there and we're going to build that up by making the top line a lot thicker and then there's all sorts of eyelash pointing just off to the right here same on this side let's make it a lot thicker go off into points for the eyelash and shapes off of there as well and then eyelashes at the bottom i can have lots of points just sticking off the bottom like so and then we we'll use these pupil shapes our guiding points just to smooth in the edges a little bit more bring that slightly further to the right for the eye on the right and we'll get some nice big dark pupils inside as well now there's going to be just a hood of the eye eye blush sorry hood of the eyelid i should say just over the top there just by getting some quick lines over the top and then the actual eyebrows themselves we're going to start just below the cross point of our circle just down on the inside right hand edge I'm just going to make that hook up and round like so on this side and then a similar thing on this side just going to dash up above that line just to about there. The nose of this character is a very slight mark it's going to be the level of the bottom part of the circle just to the left of the center line so around about here and you can literally just indicate almost just dash or a line to get that in and then the rest of the smile I'm just going to put a cheeky something around about there just floating that halfway down the face in fact let's float that just a little bit higher lovely happy already now i'm just going to reinforce the outside edge of the face by going in slightly where we've got the eyes before curving round a little bit more just to create that cheek and line and flicking out down with the chin same on the way back and then we can get some clothes sorted out on the way down so Rias has this weird schoolgirl cloak thing that she wears firstly. So I'm just going to start from around about here and I'm going to create a line that goes to around about here and I imagine a space across right across the collarbone area where it pulls this cloak together. So these are our pulling points and this basically has a shape that covers over the shoulders. It goes like this, just follow this path out over this boob, drops down where the armpit is then it comes back up over the arm, flares out a little bit past the arm, back down the other side, and then just disappears behind the back. This is our line for the edge of the material as it makes its way around. And then we're just gonna create a few lines of material flapping over near the shoulder, obviously going over the shoulder itself, and then dropping back down and in like so. And then a similar thing on this side. I'm going to start from about here. And this material is just going to disappear off over to the right. The boobs are sticking out beyond it. And then just down over this shoulder. Just dropping off again a fold of material. Then it's actually going to flare out off to the right as well. And just have this kind of material pattern like that. Go right back to these lines and get a second edge in there. Just follow that shape all the way back round for the trim. Really quickly. Get that trim line on everything. Same on the other side. Quick bit of trim. Disappears there. Comes back up here. And then right in the middle there is for both. So this is a fairly simple shape to get out of the way. Just do a kind of notch like this. A little oblongish square shape. And then just go down and just create these two like squarish bunny ears that drop off. And then just do another pair behind it that's how we have a really simple cheat bow keep it really basic and then up here we've got the collar so following this chin line if you imagine we've got another downward arrow that we're just drawing in here pointing down and that's actually going to be the folds of the collar here so we bring that up and around to the back 
and then the folds of the collar here. Just creating this lapel down, up, around and back again. And again, this is even itself got some trim. So just some shapes in there, like that and like that. Little gaps in the corners. So that's most of the top part in. This cloak situation follows around to be like some kind of school jacket corset thing. It's a very weird design. But basically under the boob, if we just get a line that hooks down here and another one that hooks down here, line off down the middle and then create again some trim. One there and that side there. With a button up in this corner, another one dropping off the page. And then we're just gonna thin out the guidelines that we've been using from the chest. So this is actually gonna drop off around right here on this character. Made her a little bit wide in the hips, in the chest even, and then drop off to there. I like where this line is, so we're gonna keep that. Just make sure that's all still on camera, good. And it just means that this line gets to come back in even further as it tucks underneath. Great. So let's get this arm out of the way. We've got material for the shirt here, so we need to involve the folds where everything curves in. So I'm just gonna have some folds where we just zig out from this crook of the joint and then come back in with these abstract angular triangular shapes. Another fold of material there, just a lump to show the material's going back before filling it in on the arm here. Back on the arm there, notice it goes to a point where the elbow is and this pulls the material down there, otherwise the arm also has its material just shooting off here from the fold but a great big cuff right there before the hand actually comes out the other side. Let's get that cuff shape in. Again, just mapping that on top. This arm as well is fine, just dropping off as it already is. And then I think, now that I'm, because I'm looking at a reference image as well, I think we need to make these bow bits a little bit longer. <gasps> How dare he? So let's go down here and just show that these map over a little bit into almost like two work ties, just straight out and down. Just a kind of abstract shape like that, brilliant. The shirt has its own dividing button line up the middle that goes up to the cuffs. And then we just need to map on a few guidelines to follow the shape of the arm. So follow this arm shape down, and then it just crinkles and buckles all over with the material, and then goes out here. And then we'll have another one off around the outside edge, and another one on the inside edge as well. This arm also has a shirt pattern material there, and same over the chest, curving out a fair bit just to show the surface that it's on. We've got these curves, the material coming up and in, then a different facing curve on the other side of this spherical shape, and then dropping off behind. Same on this side as well, curving out off to the right. The further right we go, the more curve there is, just to show how that shirt is mapped over the surface. So those are most of the basic bits. We've got the character and the clothes and the form, but we need to do all of that what is luscious red hair. So mapping out hair can be very difficult for characters that have a lot going on. I like to split it down into lots of triangle zones. For example, I'm going to imagine a curving triangle shape that goes right down past these eyes to around about here. Just curves around the shape of the face. Comes up to here is triangle number one. Triangle number two is just a curve that goes around the outside of the face, hooks back in so it covers over the cheek and it comes out fairly far in that example, curved triangle number two. Then we've got number three is just a shorter triangle that's on this side, just dropping down near the eye. And before it's going to be very similar again, this one is curving all the way out but coming back in around the face as a guideline. And then we've got all the rest of the areas of hair are just going to kind of shoot off in different directions, such as following this curve at the top, we can imagine bits of hair in a triangle shape that goes completely the other way here. Also maybe a similar thing here. Now you don't need to draw in all of these triangles, but what I'm getting at is you can map out roughly where all the hair is flowing. And now that I've got that in as a bit of guide point, I'm going to go ahead and start to split these into lots of strands of hair. So up on this side, I'm going to swoop down and I'm going to have maybe a point of hair that goes near the eye and then one that curves around, follows the main path of that triangle up here. I'll split it into three to have another one up here and then a few other bits of hair shooting down on this side, just creating these other shapes like so. 
And then on this side, we've got more than one instance of the hair coming in, curving over, just over the face on the right. There's more bits of hair that follow this shape as we go out and around. And you just have to be patient with this. Get loads of these shapes in. As more and more the hair just gets further and further out every time before it hooks up here and we end up having just another couple bits one down here and then a very thin bit that was around about here just going off in the other angle like so there's then all these bits of hair just join up at the top at this edge they're all folding back to one degree or another and then the hair on this side does a similar thing comes around and then starts to just spike out a lot to the right and this side until we get a fairly large strand doing its thing and remember this all comes around to the top of the head it's not flat on the top of the head it's growing out the top of the head so our hairline is probably going to end up bulbing a little bit all the way above our actual headline all the way back out around here now there's loads of bits happening Around the back, we've got a few other abstract triangle shapes going off. Loads of hair falls down past the back and then kind of shoots off round behind the character. Lots of sort of flowing arcs and spaces. Does a lot of that on this side. So we're going to have this just streaming off here and then just kind of going out and down. This doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to show all sorts of hair on this character. It's one of their main features something to behold and then lots of other strands just making its way back up behind our character and then two great big areas around the front as well that go down the front of this character curve over the front of the chest like this just around about boob level always going back up separating into different hairs like so again this isn't going to be perfect and then another bit right down on this side doing a similar thing. Flowing down, going in, covering up everything around here, creating the shape of this line here. That's just a few great big strands on that side. So there we go essentially. We just need one more bit of the top that sprouts off the top of the head. Kind of just shoots off like this. It's kind of like a two-part bit of hair. It just goes out like that and springs down and back in. Probably goes a bit further to the front like that. And that is essentially it. Let's check through the camera phone again. Lovely, it's all in focus. So, we've done a lot of things here and it looks like a bit of a mess, but don't worry. Um, when it comes to drawing female anime characters, I have a very set process I like to use that gets the form in, then the clothes and then the hair and then all the bits. So that's why we've got so many guidelines on here. It is a slightly complicated image, so well done if you've been following along. But I'm going to drop into some time lapse, put an ink layer on here, and then we can see which lines we're actually keeping and which lines we're rubbing out. See you in a sec. And there we go, a quick, simple, easy picture of Rias Gremory from High School D times D. When I scan this in, I'm going to make all of this hair a deep blood red. The eyes will be red as well. The skin tones are fairly light flesh color. The shirt's in white and this kind of jacket area is a kind of um, medium bluish gray as well with white trim around the edges. So I hope you guys found this to be useful and had to go at home. If you're doing your own artwork, like my Facebook page and you can submit it on there and if I like it, I'll show it off for everybody to see. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up. Come subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got so much art stuff going on. Join the ride and don't forget you can always check my Patreon page where your support, little as a dollar a month, helps make all of this possible and you get loads of art rewards right back. Have a great week, everybody. Take care. <music>